Hello Statistics students, this is Jamie Amy, and this video is our discussion on section 9.1, two population proportions. Now, considering two populations, we're often looking for, is there a difference? We're often asked, as the statisticians, is there a difference in these two populations' proportions? So, that being said, we're going to look at P sub 1 minus P sub 2, because subtraction is how we find the difference between two proportions. Some examples would be a drug manufacturer claims subject, that subjects treated with Lipitor have a mean cholesterol level that is lower than the mean cholesterol level for subjects given a placebo. So that would be uh, two populations. Population number one, cholesterol levels for the subjects with Lipitor, and then population two would be the cholesterol levels for different subjects treated with a placebo. So it's important to note that if P sub 1 minus P sub 2 equals 0, that means that their difference is nothing, uh, then there is no difference in the population proportions. And therefore, uh, we will be looking to see if our interval, um, we're going to set up some confidence intervals, and we're going to check if that those confidence intervals contain 0. And that's going to help us make our conclusions. Um, so in summary, a confidence interval would contain zero if the limits have different signs. So basically if one limit was negative and one limit was positive, that would mean that the interval contains zero. And that would lead us to say that there is no difference in the two population proportions. And then there's the second case where the limits would have the same signs. So both your confidence limits are negative or both of your confidence limits are positive. Uh, if you graphed those on a number line, zero would not be between the two, so we say the interval does not contain zero, and we would say yes, there is a difference. Um, now, however, we always want to remember, along with our statistical significance, uh, we want to remember practical significance, and um, we'll see some examples where zero is in the interval, but it's very, very far to one of the limits, and uh, we may need more data if that's the case. <laughs> All right, notation for two population proportions. We're still going to use lowercase p for population proportion and lowercase n for sample size and x for the number of successes. It's the sub 1 that's going to differentiate all of those from the sub 2s for population number 2. Uh, notice the, you guys should be used to this one we've seen a lot and this one, this one we've seen a lot, p hat we've seen a lot, q hat's its complement. These two are new though, so if you're asked to find um, P sub 1, the mean, here's your equation to do so, and P sub, I'm sorry, and its complement would be 1 minus that. Okay. Uh, requirements would be we need uh, proportions from two independent simple random samples, and we need for each of the two samples. Um, to have a minimum number of successes of five and a minimum number of failures at least five. Uh, if we're getting all failures or all successes, um, then our requirements are not met. So keep an eye out for that um, minimum of five successes and minimum of five failures. And if our requirements are met, we can test claims about the comparison of two population proportions using the program called 2PropZ test. And like I've said before, I love the way they um, named these. Two means two populations. Prop is because the question is about proportions. Z for the standard normal distribution. And they even add the word test there to let you know that that program will run a hypothesis test for you. Um, to construct a confidence interval, between the uh, for the difference between two population proportions, you'll run two prop z interval, uh, named in a similar fashion, two for two populations, prop because the problem will be about proportions, z for the standard normal distribution, and this one ends in int, telling us that this program can help us set up a confidence interval. All right, let's try an example. 89 undergraduates were randomly assigned to two groups and were given a choice of keeping the money or buying gum or mints. 
we are asked to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the difference between the two population proportions. All right, so we have group one, and those were the subjects given a $1 bill. And then we have group two, and those subjects were not given a $1 bill. They were given four quarters. So equal amounts of money, but one comes in a bill and one comes in four quarters, so different denominations. Uh, then we have broken it down by the amount that spent the money, and we had 12 successes of those with a single dollar bill spend the money out of a total 46. Still uh, focusing on the uh, row for spent the money, we had 27 uh, spend the money uh, out of those 43 that, had, uh, that were given four quarters. Okay, our requirement check, we have 89 subjects, simple random sample, two independent groups, and all counts are above five, which means we can move forward with this hypothesis test. Let me erase that stuff just so this doesn't get too cluttered. <clears throat> all right, so I want you, and I will do this with you, to pick up your graphing calculator. And I was charging. <laughs> Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, so I want you to hit stat and scroll over to tests and find the program by scrolling down. We are looking for two prop Z interval, two because we have two populations prop because we're talking X and N proportions, Z and I and T because we've been requested to create a confidence interval. Okay, I found mine, mine is B on my calculator. So I open that program and I'm going to enter the stats here. X sub one is 12, N sub one is 46, X sub two is 27, and N sub two is 43. Confidence level is the default 0 0.95 and now we calculate that. Okay, that first line of output gives us a lower limit of negative 0.559 and an upper limit, limit of negative 0.175. It also gives you p hat sub one there, p hat sub two, n sub one and n sub two. Okay, so another way to take that from the output screen, which is currently an interval notation, you could write it in um, Com as a compound inequality like you see here. And we will word our conclusion uh, based off the signs on each interval limit. So the limits have the same sign, they're both negative. That means that the interval does not contain zero, implying that there is a difference between the two proportions. There is evidence to support a difference in the proportion of people who will spend money dependent on the denomination size. Yeah, and if you look again at your calculator screen, we see that the best guess for the first population that would actually spend the money is 0 0.26. So just to wrap your head around that, you can think like 26%. Contrary to the second population, um, if you look at your calculator screen again, You've got p hat sub 2 is equal to 0. Point, uh, let's go to 6, 3. So you can think of it, just to help you wrap your mind around it, as 63% of that population spent the money. So just a way to quickly check that our um, conclusion makes sense, or at least seems reasonable enough with those values, and we didn't make some um, error that we should go back and recalculate. Okay, example continued. We have the same data here, but this time we're being able, or we are being asked to test the claim that money in large denominations is less likely, ooh, focus on that, we have an inequality wording there, to be spent relative to an equivalent amount of money in smaller denominations, and they want us to use an alpha significance level of 0 0.05. Okay, it's all the same data, so we're going to set up our null and alternative hypothesis. You guys know it's two capital H's, sub naught and sub one. Um, now look at your notation. If this is your first time working with two populations, 
then this is your first time seeing that there are multiple P's in the null hypothesis as well as the alternative hypothesis. And that is because we're comparing sub P sub 1 and P sub 2. In the null hypothesis, we always use the equal sign, which you can see there. And we know that this one is a little more challenging to determine. It comes from the wording of the claim. And sure enough, that inequality less likely to be spent led us to the less than sign there. Okay, before I go on, I'm going to erase all that. Okay, so pick up your cal graphing calculators, please. Go ahead and hit stat, scroll over to test, and this time be careful, it starts out the same. It's 2 prop z, but this time it's test instead of interval. On my calculator, it's the sixth option. So I open that, and very nice, if you haven't cleared your uh, data yet, it still has the right numbers in there. X sub 1 is 12, 46, 27, 43. Now careful, the next input it's requesting from us is our alternative hypothesis, which is the less than P sub 2. This is how it looks on your um, calculator, so make sure that one is highlighted. And then calculate. All right, we have been given the output screen now. If we look at that carefully, we have a test statistic of z equals negative 3.487 and so on. We have a p-value. Mine is given to me in scientific notation as 2.439 and so on. But then you have to be really careful. P-values can't be 2. They have to be between 0 and 1. So if you notice the capital E and the minus 4, it means move that decimal places four, move that decimal four places, making that a very small p-value. And if we compare our p-value to our significance level, and we do that because we're using the p-value method, then we find that p is low. And we know that if P is low, the null must go. And so our decision is to reject the null hypothesis. And we would say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that people with money, with money in large denominations are less likely to spend relative to people with an equal amount of money in smaller denominations. That supports what we um, concluded based off the confidence interval as well. And as long as we have the same significance level, uh, we should have confidence intervals and hypothesis tests that have conclusions um, that support one another, not opposite. All right. All right, I want you to pause this video and try these examples. Welcome back. The first one says test the claim with the 0.01 significance level. That's our alpha. Uh, that, a higher proportion. That's, a, that's an inequality word right there. That's a greater than. Proportion of students who take statistics in eight weeks, meaning four days a week, successfully pass the class. Then students who take statistics in 16 weeks, meaning only two days a week, I say only because it's less than the four days a week. All right, so we have uh, two populations, and that would be the eight-week students and the 16-week students. And then we have our successful students represented by x sub 1 and x sub 2, and our total numbers represented by n sub 1 and n sub 2. Okay, this first one was asking us to test a claim. So if you decided to set up your null and alternative hypothesis, as you see here, excellent job, you did that correctly. Pointing out again, this came from the word higher. If you chose to run two prop Z test, nice job, you made the right choice. If you had a p-value on your output screen, uh, which corresponds to a p-value of 0 0.0976 and so on, then you got your p-value correct, nice job. If you compare that to your significant le significance level, seeing that p is high, then you did that right, nice job. p is high, well that looks terrible. 
All right, so we have P is phi, which means that the null will fly, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Conclusion there, and then our first blank is not sufficient evidence to second blank support, and we say the claim that, and then we restate the claim. So great job if you got that one right. If you did not, rewind this. Try to figure out where you went wrong. Um, and if you want to test yourself again, just switch the numbers up and, and run the test again uh, for a, an additional example. All right, part B asked us to construct a 95, a 99% confidence interval. So if you chose to run two prop Z interval, nice job, you made the right choice. And if you ran it correctly, you should have got a lower limit of negative 0.1 and an upper limit of 0.305. And so those are opposite signs. So if we were to graph those on a number line, zero would be included. Um, and if zero is included, we're saying there, there could be a difference. So the limits have different signs. Interval contains zero, implying that there is not a significant difference between the two population proportions. Okay. And that finishes our discussion on section 9.1. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time to discuss section 9.2.